uh, as I already mentioned, thank you, uh, Sharon, for staying till the end in the room four. And I'm sure room four is pretty exciting. I've always been part of room four so far. <laughs> so I have a soft corner myself. And thank you to the whole team of Metaverse One. And I have been associated with Teams Nation Metaverse uh, for quite, I think, one or two more years. And looking forward to participate again in the upcoming years. But uh, today, I have some fun stuff for you all. You know, probably when we talk about Power Platform, many of us feel that is low code, no code. How can we integrate different services, different APIs with Power Platform, and how can we build our own stuff? Uh, if we have any custom APIs, then today's topic is stay is straight away for all of such users who have been using Copilot. They are exploring uh, Copilot in different model versions, like either for using chat or getting information from web or in their work, either using Copilot or they are generating images on top of using Microsoft Designer. So one such example I have with me is how you can generate art library and how you can use those existing of uh, those connectors, which are APIs, and how you can connect it or wrap it on top of Power Platform and work with Power Platform assets like Power Platform Canvas app or Automate or any of the uh, applications or integrations if you want to make happen. So today, uh, before I start ahead, I have a really pretty good agenda and throughout I'll be demonstrating it live. Short introduction about myself. I shouldn't have put it so much, but yeah, uh, my bad. I have added all the copy pasted materials here. So Shristi Shah and I've been working as technical consultant at Rapid Circle and I'm also a Microsoft MVP in Microsoft 365 apps and services and also in business applications. Uh, you can find me, you know, speaking at various conferences or events. Uh, majorly, I keep working on M365 stack, either at a SharePoint, Teams, and Power Platform as well. And I have also worked closely with Azure, Azure Infrastructure as a Code. So pretty much, I have uh, knowledge around Microsoft stack. You can find me, you can ping me uh, on LinkedIn. And if you have any queries or concerns uh, related to the tech, please feel free to shoot it into the LinkedIn post. Uh, apart from that, let's dive into the agenda. I will not straight away walk you through the Power Platform Custom Connector because before we understand DALI, we need to understand where exactly uh, DALI comes into the picture. Like what exactly Azure OpenAI is. Are you already able to access Azure OpenAI? Or if not, then how you can go ahead and access it? And let's say if you are already able to access, how you can go ahead and start playing with the models, either it is GPT, GPT variants like 3.5, 4.0, or uh, DALI, or assistance, all these APIs, Whisper, etc. And how one such example I've taken is how I can use DALI and consume it in Power Platform. So that we are going to take a look at today. Okay. Before I go to the demonstration, I would like to quickly elaborate on a few of the slides and I'll keep it very short and simple. And this will be a crisp and concise conversation. How Azure OpenAI is different from OpenAI? So we have been hearing about Azure OpenAI for almost a year and we have been hearing it in different forms like Copilot, Microsoft Copilot, Microsoft 365 Copilot or GitHub Copilot, you know, different variants of Copilot. And what exactly is Azure OpenAI is, how it is different from OpenAI, the normal chat GPT when we talk about, right? So as you can see from the screen, Azure OpenAI gives a lot of different models. And those models are, you know, GPT-4, GPT-3, the Cordex, the DALI, Whisper, text-to-speech models. And these comes with the security. Uh, and it when when I talk about security, right, it is going to reflect and it is going, it is built on top of Azure security. So this is what Azure OpenAI is. It is compatible to our Azure OpenAI and it it is built on top of our Azure security model. So when when you use normal OpenAI, so let's say I go to my OpenAI, I have the endpoint, I have the key, I have my uh, license and I start using ChatGPT either for getting some information, either it helps me to create some recipes or uh, posters or images or any variant of OpenAI, you are exactly uh, using the same interface. So the model which we are using is exactly the same, but the security layer is added by Azure and that is why we are using Azure OpenAI. So the model remains the same while there are built-in Azure security layers, which you'll also get it when you use it. 
so you don't have to worry about hey whether i am writing this prompt whether this is going to be used by the model to build on top of it no it is not going to use any of it any of your prompts or any of the outcomes which which responses you get right along with that there are another set of layers as well like this is built on top of responsible ai you can filter your content as well and we'll see how you can do that what are different features are available in the azure open ai studio i hope now that summarizes how azure open ai is different than open ai it adds just to summarize it has its uh, own security layer as well when we talk about azure now where are these models deployed and where i can explore these models either it is gpt or uh, assistant or whisper or dali where can i go ahead and play with all these models you can straight away go to the azure ai studio previously we used to call it azure open ai studio when it was released last year but now azure ai studio not just holds the open ai models but it also holds the different models from different vendors so we'll see that as well where you can go ahead and create your own you know model you can deploy it and then you can start playing with it now once you have the model ready you can you can easily integrate that model in any of the services taking a look at azure ai studio we'll do that in live i'll skip that because uh, we 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 are going to demonstrate the use case when it is helpful for every one of us so it will cover how it is beneficial for each line of business how you can access azure ai studio so azure ai studio you can either access it with this a uh, link this is the link probably i'll paste it at the end of the session you can go ahead and apply it through this form and then the subscription you just have to provide your subscription details and then azure open ai will be enabled for your tenant uh, your subscription tenant and then once you have that you can go ahead and start creating resources just like how normally go ahead in the azure you create resource group or sql server or any of the azure resources similarly you can go ahead and create azure open ai resource as well so without a further ado let's go ahead and check that in action i am in my portal.azure.com if you aren't familiar with azure portal so this is the home for all your azure resources so let me just quickly go to the portal.azure.com if you have the subscription then you will be able to create it uh, where, where whatever you see on the screen i have the subscription hence i am able to create the resources if you don't have the subscription probably you will have to either go for the trial version or you have to create or get your own pay as you go kind of subscription so that whatever resources you are consuming or creating you get uh, you pay for it right so now as you can see from the screen i am in my azure home page i am going to just type in azure open ai and you see this azure open ai is a resource as soon as you click on it what you can do is you can go ahead and create services so from the service what you can see is azure open ai is part of azure ai service now azure ai is a home for all your ai services now when i talk about all the ai what other additional things you can find is your search computer vision face custom vision you can see all of these in the left navigation see azure ai service holds all the ai resources it it is the home and now along with all the other ai you also have azure open ai as part of azure ai service now let's go ahead and create one okay i'll just quickly show you how we can go ahead and create you need the subscription you need the resource group if you already have it just tag it with any of the resource group if you don't have any resource group ask or you can just create it new from here itself in the same interface you just select your region it is advised that in the resource group you know the resource group where your re the region in which your resource group is it is advised to go ahead and create your resources in the same resource group but you can create it in different resources different regions as well no harm in doing that it's just that to avoid latency and uh, region unavailability you are advised to use the same region but let me just pick one such region and i'll pick quickly pick okay i am just ke keeping east us i am going to name as this random name and pricing tier so right now i i have only one option to select standard pricing tier and if you want to know more details about the pricing you can view the full pricing details from the documentation as well like what is considered in s0 pricing tier or what is the transaction limit the tokens etc everything for each model you'll be able to find it for, in the pricing 
detail what next next i'm going to hit here and now whenever i create this service whenever i am going to create the azure uh, open ai service whether this is allowed for all networks or are you going to restrict it so right now i'm going to allow it for all networks keeping in mind the demo demonstration scope i'm going to just name the tag that this is the type is for demo okay and i'm going to hit next the tags are just for the readability purpose so whenever i go ahead and check the resource so i by mistake i don't go ahead and delete anything and which is something you know used for production environments or some uh, mvps i don't want to delete that hence i always try to add the tag so that it is readable that this resource is used for this demonstration as soon as you hit create a new azure open ai service will be created for you i already have that created so i'm not going to create it but you can see all the basic details are filled the network is open the tag is added hit create and it will be cre created for you i'm going to use the straight away created one so just the name for my azure open ai service is custom dali to keep in mind that we are working on the dali demonstration i'm going to straight away go to the azure open ai studio give it a minute to load okay so now what you are able to see here is there is a banner which states that hey there is a new look and you are are not supposed to use this one you're going to uh, go to azure you should go to azure ai studio if you want to take a deeper look at all the models which are part of azure open ai right so now this azure open ai studio only lets me uh, play with the models so let me go to the, go to the models and you can see all the models i'll just close this yeah these are the open ai models it it comprises of dali gpt35 gpt4 and text embedding models so right now whatever i'm seeing is part of open ai model itself now let's say i want to consume some models from hugging face some models from meta where can i find those for that you have to go to the azure ai studio this is the new home page for your azure open ai models now here what you are seeing is exactly same interface but it it is more elaborative now let me go and make walk you through this interface first of all before we straight away dive to the dali model right this is the interface wherein you see that right now i am inside my custom dali resource this is the azure open ai resource where i am and in the left navigation this is the current resource this is the model catalog whenever you go ahead and see model catalog it will hold all the models from not just from microsoft but also from the different uh, vendors which is mistral meta hugging face nvidia all the other uh, organizations as well now it is up to you which model you want to consume and if you want to consume small language models you will find those as well here and there are different levels of filtration so you can play around with this at, uh, based on your you know uh, scenario let's say you want to work with hugging face so you can just straight away filter down with all the models which are provided by hugging face or nvidia and right now you see in the collection i have selected the two of the collections i will just skip nvidia and in the deployment i'll keep hugging face and i i, I want to see what are what are, are the options you are able to find in the deployment options either it is serverless or managed compute i want to go ahead and find something for managed compute either you are trying to find something which is fine tuned and if it is fine tuned what scenario you are looking for it is image classification text generation what it is so i'm going to select image classification but right now if you see i select all and you will find all of these options let me just quickly find so all these things you will be able to find it with the more filters granular level of filters and you can go ahead and straight away deep dive into that as you can see in the hugging face i only have the option to go ahead and select text generation while i will remove hugging face and i'll just select all and now i only want to generate or filter down on text generation or maybe let's take image classification take some time let's filter by those and now you are able to find that hey for image classification from all the collections i have these all choices now up to the benchmark so what you can do is 
let's say you are not aware about which is the model which you should use uh, and you are confused that which model is good in performance or uh, which one should I use then what you can do is go to the model benchmarks and then straight away add all the models which you know uh, you want that hey these are the image ones let's go ahead and filter down by the model I'm going to filter down by Microsoft P okay and I'm going to filter down more by okay just Microsoft and I'm going to compare different models let's go ahead and state it I want to compare this two. okay now consider this example I, I know this is a very vague example which can but consider these two and now I want to see the performance of the model this is P2 and this is Mistral large model now you can see the accuracy which one is good basically you should not compare one small language model with the large one but just for an example consider this just for the example sake and you'll find that hey these are the pointers where your model is performing and these are the rates this is the score of the model compare it not just the accuracy but also the coherence the groundedness the fluency and the relevance so you can compare it compare the models different models with each granular level uh, not just with the accuracy level but with the more detailed view as well so once you are done comparing it so benchmark provides you that flexibility that hey you can go ahead and compare different models and if after comparison based on your scenario you want some uh, you you want to build something which is higher higher accuracy and low relevance then you can just straight away pick that model and build on top of it so this is what it provides prompt catalog is just the sample it provides all the sample prompts so this is more often machine learning deep dive i'm not going to deep dive into this right now so whenever you go to any of the samples you will you will find the github repository wherein there are a lot of details about each of the model what it does how you can straight away go ahead and use it so just consider one example of trans uh, travel assistant and you will find the detailed description of each each, each uh, prompt sample here coming to the ai services as I mentioned, this is the home for all your AI and not just open AI. You'll find speech, language, vision, etc. Now coming back to our agenda for today. Where do I see open AI models? So let's let's go ahead and go to the deployments. Here you'll be able to see all the deployments. So now what exactly deployment is? What Microsoft gives is it provides you all the model. Now I, I showcased right there were different models which is GPT, DALI, assistant APIs right now how do you go ahead and consume those models to consume that you need to create a deployment now when I say deployment let's just go ahead and create the deployment right. we, we are going to deploy based on the existing base model so we already have the base model which are, GP, which are these ones right I am going to search by DALI because our intention is to play with DALI. I'm going to use DALI 3 and I'm go and you can see some information about DALI 3 belongs to the family of DALI and what it helps you to do is you can go ahead and generate images by, by giving prompts but it does not edit existing images or create variations. So this is a small description and you can go ahead and read a documentation as well. As soon as you click on confirm this is my deployment form page. Okay let it load. I already have exhausted the quota, but I will quickly walk you through the key uh, important, you know, details which you have to fill in. You have to give the deployment name. Once you give the deployment name, just make sure to give it uh, based on the model which you are creating. So right now I am creating the deployment for DALI 3. So I'm going to keep same name, the model version, either you can uh, pick automatically like whichever is default or I'm going to go with the 3.0 version. The deployment type will be of type standard capacity units this is basically to uh, get you know whenever you give the prompt tokens right and based on the prompt tokens you get the response so how your capacity is going to be consumed this is your quota level uh, description which you can find you can give the capacity limit whatever you want right now because i don't have the quota it is not allowing me to uh, give any of the capacity units after filling this information what you can do is you also have the flexibility to go ahead and filter the content straight away while creating the deployment even if you create so let's say you go, 
went ahead and created with default content filter and you just you know enable the dynamic quota because right now i don't have any uh, selection here so just hit deploy once you are done let's go to the existing one in the deployments i'm going to go to my dali 3 which i have already created so you see the name the standard deployment type right and the rate per limit the model version is also same everything is same right what more you can find is you can find the more information about the endpoint this is the endpoint this is the key which you are going to use and consume now here whenever you create any of the you know deployments either you can keep the content filter as default or if you want to update you can create your own content filters as well so now what i can do is for for image generation maybe you don't want your users to generate images which are you know uh, which are which does which doesn't fit or adhere to your company restrictions right or you have ethics compliance it doesn't fit to your organization guidelines then you want to add those filtrations as well so maybe your organization is uh, very confidential and you don't want your people to generate images any of the images which are a part which are related to the sector of oil and gas or maybe uh, healthcare consider that example so if you want to add such level of filtrations all you have to do is you have to create your own content filter when when you go to the create your own content filter section i am just going to give a basic name hit next so what you can find here is see let me just zoom out and what you can see is based on the categories either it is violence hate uh, sexual self harm prom shields you know which, which can attack easily by the hackers or etc you can find all these categories but in each category you see the media type there is image and text media type and what threshold do you want to keep so violence you you want to keep it like minimal you don't want anyone to create any content which is violent hate same because we, we are the organization who foster inclusion inclusion and diverse uh, diversity so i don't want to generate any content which you know can uh, straight away hate someone's feelings etc so i want to just keep this also low sexual i want to keep it low self harm i can keep this mediocre prom shields as you can see this will be blocked straight away and now you can also add block list so let's say right on the block list is off but as soon as you turn this on you can also add the content which you want to block you can do that straight away start selecting it from the sections i'm going to skip this i'm going to hit hit next once this is done that was based on the input so now whenever you are talking to any of the models it works two ways right the prompt which you are passing to the model and the response which your model is passing it to you so input filter is basically whenever you type in any of the prompt this prompt will be taken to the model and then based on the you know uh, rag it will take this information and it will try to find the information for you now when this this prompt is passed it is going to take my input filters so whenever i uh, pass the prompt it will say check whether i have i have passed all the uh, filtrations parameters or not if yes if it finds anything which is harmful or violent it will straight away block me there itself it will not go it is not going to respond back with information similarly this is for input same thing is for output so whenever model is generating any of the output which is you know related to uh, some violent material or something which is which is targeted to a set of user group then it is going to straight away parse it for me and it is going to straight away give it back to me the information that hey this is uh, the content filter is already applied so it can't give you back the information because it had some hateful comments or something like that because i created that content filter in such a manner so let's just create a content filter again and i'm going to hit next once you are done creating it now it is asking you that where should i apply this filter to if you don't want to apply it straight away you can skip it uh, right now and it will create a new content filter and later you can attach this with any of the models right now you can just go ahead and create it if not then see here it is saying that no content content filter can be applied for my model this this is how you can go ahead and create it either you can apply it to any of your chat gpt versions as well but this is the unique layer which you can play with if you want to create your own content filter coming back to our section so this i hope this is clear for everyone whenever you create the deployment model either you keep your content filter to the default mode which is selected by default like everything will be on scale of scale of medium 
if you or your organization is more restrictive and confidential and if you want to create your own content filters or customers you can straight away go ahead and create it and later you can attach it to your existing models as well coming back to our model uh, deployment right now i have the endpoint i have the key i have my model created how i can go ahead and straight away consume this or try it if you directly want to try it you can just go to the playground playground gives you the flexibility to go ahead and you know just try at the first level so let's say i want to generate a drawing because we are considering the scenario for art and education i am just going to i'm just going to hit generate so what i have given is i have asked in the prompt that generate an art form which is mandala for adults uh, the age group is less than 18 and the drawing should be you know not colored because i want to give this skeleton for all the users and they can go ahead and color it so this is the version which dali created it and now i feel that hey this is not up to my uh, my prompt which i was thinking so i want to reframe this prompt more either you can reframe or you can ask you know copilot to regenerate it so as you can see the option i want the dali model to regenerate and i if you want you can delete the existing one as well so let's just hit wait for a second to regenerate see now it has given a more clear picture even if you want something more better then you can provide more precise prompt i've just added any random prompt right now what you can do is you can copy the prompt so that if if the results were too up to the mark and you feel that hey this was good you can copy the prompt and you can create your prompt prompt repository wherein you can add all these prompts and then later on you can just use or integrate it with your dali so that it provides the exact results but as i say exact it is not going to provide the replica so whenever you type the same prompt again the chances are that chances are very rare that you get the same response back okay now what you can do is he from the same screen we have the flexibility to see more details and more code but before that let's just go ahead and see the settings so what we are doing is we are just asked to generate the image but the image size the image style the quality uh, were default ones so as you can see the image size was 1024 style was vivid image quality was standard if i want i can just add or update the style or i i can also provide in that in the prompt but these are the properties or settings which comes with the image generation along with this there are few more like prompt and the number of images right now what you are seeing is the number of image you can regenerate more right but while we are coding this or while we are integrating this we have to keep all these properties in mind the number of image the prompt the image style the image quality and the image size so all these will be considered now where i can find all this information so you can see in the view code section i'm going to go to the json format and in the json version what it is saying is there are two ways in which you can authenticate if you if you are going to use this endpoint two ways you can authenticate either using your enter id or using the key based authentication so for this scenario i am going to move ahead with key based authentication now if i have the endpoint this endpoint and i have the body so because it is going to be post call we need the uh, input back right we are going to get the response and from the response we are going to get the image hence we need to pass the body in the body we need definitely the prompt uh, if you are not going to pass the prompt then it will not be able to provide us it will not give back us the result right and the number of images because maybe you want to generate 5 the 10 for the same prompt how many number of images you want to generate size of the image image quality image uh, size all those things are optional but prompt is necessary it is required taking this example now you know that hey i have the information i have the endpoint i have the key as you can see this is hidden i have the endpoint and i also know what body parameters to be passed now linking this information of azure open ai and consider dali which we are using the dali model how can i integrate this in my power platform so let's go back to power platform to know more in detail i am into my power platform right as of now in power platform you don't have any way like there is no way to generate images with prompt so when i say there is no way you go to your ai hub
Okay. In the AI hub, you see that there are few options. Uh, those who are aware of our Power Platform, they might know that you can straight away consume the pre-built models, which which you know integrated with your Power Apps or Power Automate. When I say pre-built models, those are already trained ones. But if you want to create your own custom models, you can go ahead and create those as well, right? By models, I mean let's say there is an invoice processing, the document processing model, or something which is text recognizer, something of that sort. But what Microsoft did is now with the uh, with the generation of AI and co-pilots, why you go ahead and you know integrate API and endpoints while you can already do that same thing with the models. So what Microsoft did, it is now providing you the prompts directly for you to use. So when I say prompts, let's just go to the prompt section. Slightly, I'm going to uh, deviate this with uh, the DALI image generation so that we understand what exactly is provided as of now and what we are trying to do in this session. So as you can see in the AI prompt section, you are able to find the prompts like summarize text, generate information or get information from the text, classify text. All these are pre-built prompts, okay? So when you say prompt, what exactly it is doing is summarize text is using your Azure OpenAI GPT 3.5 or 4. So I clicked on summarize one and as you can see in the settings, it is using some model already. It is built on top of some model. Now which model uh, you want to use it, you can choose from the model catalog, either it is 3.5 or 4.0, right? So this is what is already provided. So now let me go ahead and take an example of a custom prompt. So what you can do in the custom prompt is, let's say I have one document and I want to pass this document and I want to create a custom prompt that, hey, take this document and provide me with the information like uh, whether this document, whether this profile or this customer, uh, which, cu which line of business this customer has fallen into, either it is healthcare sector, retail sector, and based on those output, you want to uh, perform something, right? Based on those, you want to either, you want to create some library specific to each line of business, maybe healthcare specific line of business and retail specific line of business, and you are taking some action on SharePoint, consider that. You can build that custom prompt here that take this customer document, And you can pass that as an input. And this document definitely will be a file format, but you have to convert it into the text format. So I'm going to just add customer document just to showcase and demonstrate. And later, as soon as you will find it here, take this customer document and identify the line of business of this customer. Okay, simple example. As soon as you pass the sample text uh, or the text of the document, hit test prompt, it will provide you the line of business. Now you can do a lot of more things. This is just the simplest example. You can take the document and you can suggest that, hey, this is the template for the healthcare, retail, healthcare uh, this is a template for healthcare customers. And now when you just create samples for uh, Similar samples for different customers, you know, maybe you are creating or drafting proposals, but you want that this, uh, this, this is the sample template, which it should keep in mind and create something similar to that, but the content will be different, definitely. So you can create those custom prompts and you can also ask and while building it, you can also set which model do you want to use, either it is 3.5 or 3.0 or 4.0. Also, you can identify that, hey, whenever your model responds back how it should respond back it should respond back in text format or json format these all settings you can do so my conclusion is whenever you go ahead and create a go go to the ai prompts whatever you can do is it with text you pass the prompt you get it in the text or json format right so this is what we are doing with text but there is nothing with images so how you can do uh, what you can do with image and how you can integrate dali for that i have built the custom connector so let's go ahead and go to the custom connectors. And I'll go to the custom connector section. And I have built this from scratch, so we'll check it in detail. Okay, so this is my DALI 3. Before I go to the custom connector, I'll quickly show you what I have built so that now you have the context of what we are trying to do.
let this app open okay now this is my application and this is only for educational purpose wherein they can type in their prompts and they can generate images and then this will be referenced for them to create images in the drawing classes right what we have what i've done is this is the prompt library wherein i have already added some prompts and based on the prompts okay imagine and draw a new type of flower like this is the simplest example which i can provide i'm going to hit generate image as soon as this image will be generated i can go to the view image section and this takes few seconds to load so you see the new type of flower was created but this is a great example of how your users or your children the educational art students they can take this skeleton and they can build on their drawing papers as well while color combination you can add more precise prompt this is a simple one let's say the you made some changes to the prompt which was already the library and now you want that to be added into the prompt repository you can add prompt directly to the list as well so this is the simplest you know example of how you can generate the images now what i have done behind the scene now going back to the custom connectors i am using the custom connector which is generating the image and i'm using dali 3 version if you want to use dali 2 version that is a two step approach but i would recommend uh, you can do that as well in dali 2 you have to use two apis one is the post call which will help you generate the id and the next is the get call which will take that id and get the image for you so i'll come to that once i finish the dali 3 version so in the dali 3 what you have to do is you just have to pass simple information pass your icon uh, probably dali icon if you want any image you add it here uh, just pass it give the image background color I, i'm keeping everything same give the description of what this custom connector is going to do right this custom connector is going to generate images based on the prompts which user provides give that description now i'm going to use https all this information you know whatever you are going to see on the screen i am going to reference it from the view code section this section whatever you are seeing here i'm going back again you just uh, the schema is of type https and where where did i get this information from this is the information which i am going to use and this is my endpoint okay keeping that in mind at the endpoint the base url uh, slash you just add it go to the second section which is security in this security how are you going to authenticate your endpoint with either it is enter id or it is your key based authentication as i mentioned in this scenario we are going to go with key based authentication so what i did is i am going to pass api key as a label i am going to pass api key as a parameter name and where this api will sit definitely in the header right you have api endpoint you have headers and body so this is the schema or skeleton which you follow api key is done once you are done adding it you know you are going to go to the next section which is definition in the definition here you are going to add a new action so important point you are creating connectors connectors can either be of two type either those can be a trigger or an action normal power platform language right triggers are basically when you when something or event has happened you want this to be triggered so for this use case uh, we are going to build an action this action is going to take some properties and take some inputs and provide me with some information so my action is straightforward i'm going to use this uh, action to generate image so this is the summary of the action the description and the operation id the operation id should be unique string okay just keep this in mind it should not be you know something which i have already used for another custom connector that these two can't be same you have to always come up with the new unique string operation id visibility keep this keeping this none for of now now coming back to the important aspect we already would have used you know http connectors or things like postman right where you pass the end pass the uh, end point you select the verb either it is get post update patch right those all things and then you pass the body etc similarly we are doing the same thing import it from the sample so what we are going to do is we are going to give post call in the url now this is important i just have the end point but what should i do with the end point how will that endpoint know that hey I, i want to generate image i don't want you to give me some information which is already available on uh, uh, website right which is already available uh, either using gpt 3.5 or 4 nowhere that is mentioned 
coming back to the state of a R example here. I just have the classic endpoint. I don't have any more details. Now you would say how how I get the more details about what should I append uh, at the end of the endpoint for image generations. For those, there is a documentation of Azure Open AI API reference. And I also will go to the app for the those things. Let me go back. So here you see that what we are using, we are using the post call. This is going to be our post call. I just zoom in a bit. Okay. Here your endpoint will stay as it is, whatever you're getting it from the Azure OpenAI service. Append it with OpenAI deployments. Here comes the interesting story. I have the endpoint. I can directly straight away go ahead and use the endpoint. But this endpoint is intended to do what? Either it is going to generate text, generate image, or whisper or convert speech to text. What it is intended to do. Hence, we go ahead and create deployments because each deployment is tagged to a model, and each model is doing its own, it's serving its own purpose, right? So, open AI deployments and give the deployment name. Next, after giving the deployment name, we are generating images. So, image generation and the API version which we are using. This post call we are going to consume. And as you can see, I've already elaborated the API version, the deployment name, the same deployment name, where you can find that here. You see that this is the deployment name and go to the deployments. You see, this is this you're going to use it in the endpoint. Going back again, once you have done passing that information, also the API version, you can pass the latest one and provide the body. The body is simple as I showed the three parameters, number of images, prompt, and there, there are other parameters as well, which are optional. API key will be needed because you are authenticating using your API key and content type. The response which will be generated will be in the type of JSON. So this is what we are going to consume. Going back to the custom connector again, I'm going to straight away paste that, you know, paste that endpoint with the detailed information, pass the header. Don't pass API key because we've already added that. Just pass the content type application slash JSON and pass the sample JSON body. Once you are done, hit import and it will generate this schema for you. It will add this URL. The, the API version is added as part of query parameter header just has content type and body. Now individually you have to update each and everything. This is done. This is added your API version, edit it. You pass a default value because you don't want this your users to pass it. This is too technical API relevant details and no one wants to pass it from the connector, right? From the connector UI. So I'm going to pass a default value and this is a type, this is of type string. Definitely this is required or not. You can just adjust all the parameters, go back. Once this is done, similarly, you go to the content type, pass a default value as JSON, application slash JSON. If this is of type string and you don't want any of the choices to be selected, go back. Coming to the important aspect, body. Oops, I deleted it, my bad. I'm going to close it. Coming back again because I didn't save. So straight away, we'll go to the body, edit it. In the body, definitely body is required because it's the post call. Visibility is none, but body expects three parameters. Number of images, prompt, quality style so as you can see from this from the ui that each and everyone has the asterisk sign i'm going to go to number of images number of images is required but user don't have to pass it if the user is not passing it i'm going to keep default as one okay and this will be of type in teacher going back prompt i rate it this will not have any default value you want your users to input it and this is required this will be of type string come back the quality of image, you pass some default value. Don't, if you want to use this, they can just type in, but keep this as required. Style I've kept as optional. As you can see, it is not required. It will be of type string and the default value is vivid, which we already saw in the uh, playground. I'm, I'm passing all those same things. Once you are done updating the body, go back. You are done. Everything is set. Now what you have to do is you can, you are straight away good to test this. I have not added any custom code. Now AI plugin is a new feature. We'll skip this right now. You're not going to deep dive into this. I uh, keeping in mind uh, the scope of the session. Code details. Let's say you want to add code for let's say some 
for this API response code you want this to happen, this message message should be generated. You can do all of those things in the custom code. I am not doing anything as of now. Coming straight to the test. Okay. Important part. I have not added anything. You know, I have just given the API key. You can create the new correction when you come for the first time. Once you have created the custom connector for the first time, you are going to see this screen new connection. There will be no already created connections. This is similar to what we do in Power Automate, right? We create the connections with our intra IDs. Similarly, for custom connectors also, you are supposed to create connection. Either it is key based or intra ID that is secondary, but you are supposed to create one. You all you have to do is pass the API key, cre hit create, and the connection will be created for you. I already have created the connection. I'm not going to create another connection. The API version, all the default values stay as it is. Take this sample example. Okay, it got. Take this one. Create and painting. I'm going to keep this one. Add this prompt, and I'm going to test the operation. We have just created the custom connector, right? Without adding any line of code, and let's see whether it is able to generate the information for us or not. It did some operation and it is providing me with the response code 200. That's great. And if you see the body, the output, it has given some information. Okay. Now, important part is to check. What it does is the data got generated, but the data is also in the output. You are also able to see the content filter results. This is important. You know, whenever you, as I mentioned, this is where your content filters come into the picture. The amount or the ratio of hate, self harm, all those main sections, you know, where we just saw in the content filter, it is providing you that information about the severity of each content, each, you know, aspect of it, whether what was it violent, uh, it had any uh, hateful things or not, something like that. The revised prompt, which, you know, your model used was this one and the URL. So this is the URL of the image. Where this image is residing, it is residing in the blob storage. So if you hit enter, you will see that image. This image got generated and now you can take this picture. You can uh, just ask it to generate do normal drawing rather than creating the painting or something. So drawing can be a skeleton and it can be used, you know, uh, children can just paint on top of it as well. This is what custom connector provided. Now, how did I consume? So as you can see, the response was 200. Now, how I, how I can straight away use this? Go to the flow section, create a new instant cloud flow. And we are going to add the custom connector. Okay, Before adding the custom connector, I have to add the instant manual trigger. And now I'm going to add the custom connector. In the custom section, you see DALI 3 image. That is the name of our custom connector. In that, we have created the action, which is which generates an image. This generates an image, select it, and as you can see, all those default values are pre-populated. If you want, you can change it as well as per your need. I'm going to straight away give one prompt. This will be create a drawing of a cartoon. Okay, just save this. Okay, it's taking time. Okay, let's hit this and see whether our connector is working as expected or not. Done. Okay, take some time. My flow ran successfully, and as you can see, the output remains the same, the output schema and the URL of each image. Hit enter and see the drawing of cartoon got generated. Now, this is the simplest, you know, use case. How did I integrate this with the Power Apps? It's again, very simple thing going back to the Power Apps. Just to conclude with what we did, 
I am not hitting. So right now, what we saw is we created the custom connector. We integrated it directly with the Power Automate. Now, if you want that URL to be generated, and you want to show that image into your Power Apps, how how we are doing it? We are just taking that URL. We are storing it in the variable, and we are displaying it in the image. What I am doing is I am taking that image as well with each prompt, and I am creating the prompt repository. So let's see that prompt repository as well. So this is my prompt repository, and whatever images which are getting generated, I'm also storing it alongside. And these are the prompts which I keep adding it to enhance my repository. So this is a normal SharePoint list. Going back to the application, so let's go ahead and go to the generate image section. Okay, this is the important bit. Either you can add your own, you know, prompt. Let's just add draw drawing of a simple rose flower without any color. I hit generate and I'll close this. Let's see the code. So what I am doing is I am taking the prompt. I am not taking any number of. You can enhance it more. You can have drop downs to uh, let your user select the number of images and then create the gallery for all the generated images. You can also ask your user to provide the tone, the quality, all those things. I have just kept simple. I am taking the prompt, passing it to the flow, which is Power Apps triggered flow, and then using the custom connector, taking the image URL from the response, setting it to the variable. and once the variable has some information i'm going to go to the view image and here there is the image which holds the url see this response was i think not correct because we gave the flower right and it generated the tree i don't know somehow what happened but if you feel that hey the more precise prompt was able to generate more better image and you want to add that to the list you can straight away go and add prompt to your list and it will just add it to the sharepoint list that's it so this covers the end to end scenario of how you can go ahead and straight away this is not just for dali dali model you can still go ahead even though you have ai prompts readily available which is using gpt 3.5 or 4 model but still you want that hey there are some end points and apis uh, which straight away are not easily available for us to use and you want to create connectors on top of it you can go ahead and do that just reference it from the documentation which is verified like maxo documentation and then build custom connectors on top of it don't go and straight away use http connectors because that is not recommended you'll get the results easily but that is not the good way to go it is not the best practice so go ahead and create custom connector wrap it and then use your connectors either into your power automate or power apps and you are straight away you can integrate it this with any of the scenarios as per your you know uh, will you can take this anywhere this example was just for the art but you can do lot of more things with the other models available as well coming back to the slides i'm going to skip everything because we have already talked about all these things different different models which are available the content filtering the price the dali versions there are two one is 3 and two uh, dali 2 version available how you can get started with uh, dali we already talked about it the api reference documentation and i am open to questions if you have anything please hit uh, into the chat or i can just look at the chat window as well and i hope you enjoyed the session i would recommend to please provide the feedback as you know we all are trying to do our best to improvise and i i, I still want to improvise it more better it will be beneficial if you give me your feedback i can take that ahead if you want to hear some more scenarios from me then maybe you can drop that in the feedback as well that hey i want to try this out maybe next time you can showcase something like this open to all your feedback thank you so much